The following is a rebroadcast of the 11 o'clock daily news and is a public service of WABY TV. Good evening, everyone. I'm Terry Zahn. Diana is off tonight. A dolphin left behind in Broad Bay by its fellow dolphins when they migrated may soon be free. The dolphin is unable to find its way out of the bay to open water, so it will get some help from humans. A group of marine divers got the okay from the National Marine Fisheries to rescue it. Night Scene reporter Laura Marquez reports tonight on those rescue efforts. The Atlantic bottlenose dolphin swims by Michael Hillier's diving boat. Bay residents nicknamed it Rascal. It's made these waters its home since October. But Hillier says he's noticed a change in the mammal. Particularly lately here, he seemed to have really slowed down to the point that we're really uh, getting concerned. Uh, you know, we're, uh, you know, every time you turn around, if we don't see him, we're wondering uh, how he is. Observers say the young mammal's getting thinner. Divers found no food for Rascal. Apparently, the fish migrated to warmer waters, along with Rascal's fellow dolphins. Rascal somehow strayed from the pod. Well, he's either going to die of pneumonia, because he is a mammal, and they, they are like us, they are susceptible to pneumonia, or he's going to die of starvation. So it is, it's very critical. The rescue operation will begin early Wednesday morning. The crew will use a fishing net to capture the dolphin. Then they hope to transport it by helicopter to Cape Hatteras. There it can join a pod of dolphins migrating to warmer waters. The U.S. Coast Guard will provide the helicopter. The Marine Mammal Stranding Center, based in New Jersey, will supervise the rescue. It's a, it's a very serious operation because we do have to net the mammal and take him out of the water and transfer him to warmer waters. And, you know, it, it could go off smoothly and then there could be trouble. The Virginia Institute of Marine Science objects to the rescue and says netting the mammal should be only a last resort. Divers and residents claim the dolphin situation is desperate. They just hope this rescue will go off as smoothly as that of another stranded dolphin in the bay four years ago. In Virginia Beach, Laura Marquez, 1910. A scary time today for some school kids in Iowa. The ceiling collapsed at a middle school in Sioux City. At least 27 students were injured. A large section of plaster showered the children as they ate lunch in the cafeteria. None of the kids were seriously injured, but many were treated at a local hospital. The school now has been shut down until officials can figure out exactly why that ceiling collapsed. Students, parents, friends, family all remembered Karen Farley today. Funeral services for the teacher were held in Chesapeake. Farley gunned down on Friday by a gunman at the Atlantic Shores Christian School in Virginia Beach. Our Joel Rubin has more on this day of sorrow and remembrance. We have a different kind of service plan. More than 500 friends, students, relatives packed Faith Baptist Church for Karen Farley's funeral. Why didn't the gun jam sooner, said Pastor Skip Rusty. Why wasn't Karen somewhere else? Only God knows, Rusty concluded, and God doesn't make mistakes. She counted it a privilege to teach at Atlantic Shores because it was another chance for her to minister to kids to minister to the hurting, to the needy. I've met Karen and Bill through my job. Rusty invited the congregation to give their own eulogies. Karen Farley did not make headlines on Friday. She made headlines in hearts and lives the whole time that she was here on this earth. I know Karen's in heaven, said one man, having the time of her life, preparing for the best Christmas she ever had. As Karen Farley was laid to rest, her alleged killer wrestled with his conscience while under confinement at the Tidewater Detention Home in Chesapeake. Nicholas Elliott's lawyer says his client is overwhelmed with remorse that his mother is torn between concern for her troubled son and the family of the woman he killed. Because he's 16, the state could try Elliott as an adult. A juvenile court judge will decide that issue next month. I think Paul was... Shortino would like to see the case go to circuit court. They treat him as an adult. If they gave him life, he would serve the same uh, type sentence that a, any other adult would serve. Be, el be eligible for parole like in 15 years on a life term. The like trial is months off. Trial. This day belonged to those who knew and loved Karen Farley, wife, mother, teacher, friend. In Chesapeake, Joel Rubin, The Daily News.
The preliminary hearing today for the Hampton minister charged with impersonating an army officer has now been continued until January. Reverend Marcus Pierce wants more time to discuss that case with his attorney. Federal authorities claim Pierce used a fraudulent military ID for the past 17 years to get free benefits for his family. I have no comment. And the Reverend Al Sharpton is making headlines again. Today he made an appeal to get singer James Brown out of jail. I'm calling on President-elect Bush to show concern by calling down to those in the appellate division and questioning why James Brown cannot be given bond. Brown has been charged with assault. Sharpton is still under investigation for his role as an advisor to Tawana Brawley. She, you'll remember, is the New York girl who claimed she was attacked by a gang of white men. When we come back, the transition continues today as President-elect Bush picks a former rival for a cabinet spot. My name is E.M. 3 Rodriguez. I'm from the U.S.'s Guam. I want to wish my wife a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I love you very much. Save 20, 40, even 50% and more for the next few days on every Avanti fur at Tallheimer's. All furs are at greatly reduced after Christmas prices. Save up to 50% on legendary mink, silky fox, sporty fur-trimmed leathers, couture lynx, and sable. All Avanti furs are at after Christmas prices now, so you don't have to wait to save. Hurry, it's just days till Christmas. And all Avanti furs at Tallheimer's Military Circle and Coliseum Mall Salons are at savings of 20, 40, even 50% and more. Come on, Nipper, time to go out. Go on, Nipper. Hurry, honey, we're going to miss it. between winning and losing some games is determined by who has the bigger advantage. You're mine! If you play tic-tac-toe, however, your overall chance of winning is the same as everybody's, about one in seven. Tic-tac-toe, one of the few games where you can walk away a winner, no matter what your size. President-elect Bush made a surprising move today, picking one of his former campaign rivals to sit on his cabinet. Jack Kemp has been named Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. His appointment comes at a time when we're all especially aware of our nation's homeless. Andrea Mitchell reports on the George Bush approach to poverty. A former pro quarterback, Jack Kemp, promised to be a team player in the Bush cabinet after years of being one of Bush's toughest conservative critics. Having chosen until now a cabinet of old friends, Bush said he is comfortable in adding a former rival. Who's beyond getting a little criticism from time to time? Certainly not the president-elect. Bush expects his new housing secretary to continue the trend started under Ronald Reagan, who slashed federal housing programs by almost 80 percent. The federal government simply doesn't have the resources to solve this problem. Kemp favors experiments such as selling public housing units to tenants and giving businesses tax incentives to invest in inner cities. But while Bush looks to the private sector and local officials, Kemp still sees a big role for the federal government. I want to wage war on poverty. I don't want to wage war on Congress. I don't want to wage war on uh, programs that can work. And I, I don't believe we're going to balance the budget by cutting housing. Kemp would succeed the Reagan cabinet's only black, Samuel Pierce, who helped dismantle federal housing programs. Local and state officials who met with the president-elect today say he must deal with the results of those policies. Housing programs have been cut up to 80 percent over the last eight years, and that's the reason, I think, that you'll see whole families, as in our city, showing up in uh, shelters and uh, in soup lines. So that's got to be addressed. Kemp, who has not ruled out running for president again, has won praise for his commitment to solving urban problems. The trick will be doing that within a tight budget and without being disloyal to George Bush. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News at the White House. Well, you may not have found yourself at the voting polls today, but delegates to the nation's electoral college did. 
They made it official. George Bush will indeed become the 41st president of the United States. Virginia's 12 electors cast their ballots for the Bush quail ticket at a quick ceremony in Richmond. NASA today unveiled a blueprint for future exploration that would ultimately put astronauts on Mars in the next century. All exploration begins with the space station, which serves as the launching point for deeper missions. The first stop would be the moon, where astronauts would gear up for further travel, and the red planet Mars would be the final destination. The Mississippi River, still low because of last summer's drought, is closed again to barge traffic tonight. The Coast Guard says it could be three weeks before the situation improves. An estimated 50 towboats with about 1,000 barges were stalled along the river today. The Corps of Engineers estimates the river's level at St. Louis could drop to about 8 feet by the end of the week. It should be smoother sailing for Hampton Roads motorists using the downtown tunnel soon. The old tube, which has undergone some major construction work, reopens to traffic Tuesday. It's been closed now since March of 1987. Also tomorrow, 464 connecting Chesapeake and the Berkeley Bridge in Norfolk will open. The entire tunnel project, complete with a new bridge and interchange in downtown Norfolk, will have to wait until the early 1990s for that one. Coming up next, dreams of a white Christmas at Hampton Roads. I'm afraid they're dashed. Hillary joins us from the Weather Center with a forecast right after this break. Looks great, men. At Beach Ford, we give you the very best service you can get. And something else, free the Beach Ford Lifetime Service Guarantee. Pay for a covered repair just once, and never pay for that repair again for as long as you own your Beach Ford car or truck. So come on by Beach Ford and ask us for a copy of the free guarantee. After all, we must be doing something right, or we wouldn't be selling so many cars and trucks. Beach Ford. She left, and everything golden went with her. Nothing could bring that angel to earth. To drown in her laughter. Save me. To revel in the careless scandal of her walk. To breathe her innocence was life itself. <laughs> My angel. Ashes. All ashes. Was it me? Did I somehow drive her away? There are many loves, but only one obsession. Calvin Klein's obsession. Oh, the smell of it. At Leggett. Yeah, Mary, John, please. Uh, okay, I'll hold. Have you ever noticed that the people with the least time to waste always find time to read the Wall Street Journal? Perhaps it's because reading the journal had a lot to do with making them so busy in the first place. Hey, buddy, how'd you make out? I did great. Call 800-228-1200 for this great journal subscription offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-228-1200 now for the Wall Street Journal. Well, this warmer weather can't come one moment too early for me. That's cold out there. Yeah, it's oh. been real cold outside for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Unseasonably cold, but... Getting warmer. <laughs> Get warmer. It is getting warmer. Uh, we have got some real nice weather on the way. In fact, we are in the midst, folks, of a warming trend. Our temperatures have begun warming. Uh, they were nice today, and tomorrow they're going to keep on rising, and they'll be topping off, oh, about 60 degrees. And we'll have 60-degree uh, temperatures not only tomorrow, but, yes, for the day after tomorrow. That's the good news. Uh, not only is that good news, take a look at our skies tonight, and uh, they're real clear. We'll show you our skies in a minute. This is one of the reasons we're going to be getting warmer. It is the jet stream. Uh, right now, the jet stream's coming out of the south. Earlier this week, and for a couple of weeks, it had just been digging on down out of Canada, keeping us very, very cold. This is one of the reasons we are having such nice, mild weather uh, pretty much for all of the week. We're not expecting temperatures below 50 degrees right through Saturday, so that's wonderful. As for tonight, here we go, the clear skies, a lovely night out there, much more mild than it has been. It's still chilly out there, but a lot warmer than it's been for the past week. There are a lot of clouds to our west. Uh, these clouds are associated with some pretty good storms in the Plain States and a couple of cold fronts. This one low pressure system is kicking up an awful lot of winds in parts of the northern Plain States, 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts tonight. Uh, and this one down here is kicking up some good rain. Now, this is going to join and come through as a cold front. 
It'll be moving through our area sometime Wednesday. We are not expecting any precipitation with it, uh, just a bump back in temperatures, but it's no big deal. Our temps will still be in the 50s. Here's the consolidated radar. That's where the rain is falling in parts of Illinois, right on down into uh, Kansas and up Montana. They're having some snow. There's also some snow falling in Utah, but that doesn't pick up on the radar very well. So there's scattered snow in the west, but the east is looking nice and clear. We don't have anything to worry about for the next couple of days. It is looking just lovely. Here are the national temperatures, uh, much more mild again than most of December. We nearly had a record-breaking December in terms of cold. Right now, temperatures are generally in the 40s. They cool off to the north, but that's no big deal. We're not going to be seeing temperatures like that for a while. Let's take a look at the current temps from Norfolk Airport, see what's going on. And here's a seagull kind of hanging out in Broad Bay, enjoying a lovely day. Partly cloudy, 41 degrees, uh, dew point 24 degrees, 50 percent humidity. Winds out of the south at 8 miles per hour. We have a rising barometer, low is 29 degrees. Our high was 55 degrees, which is where about our temperatures should be this time of year. Bay temperatures drop back again to 41 degrees, and generally everybody is in the upper 30s uh, to low 40s. 41 degrees in Norfolk, 39 degrees in Elizabeth City, uh, 30 degrees in Gates County, and 31 degrees for Mike Joyner in Franklin. This is basically the way we're looking tonight. Clear skies, low 35 degrees uh, toward the freezing mark inland, and just a touch warmer down around Hatteras. Nice southwesterly wind. Tomorrow, a mostly sunny day. Look at this high, 65 degrees, which is actually about 10, 12, 13 degrees warmer than it normally is this time of year. Just a little cooler inland. Then tomorrow night, partly cloudy. Uh, lows about 45 degrees. And on Wednesday, still another nice one, a bit more in terms of clouds. That's when that cold front moves through, a uh, high 63. But even after that cold front does move through, take a look at these temperatures toward the end of the week. They're still expected to be in the 50s, which is very, very nice going into Christmas Eve. So you can rest assured we will not have a white Christmas. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, we may have a rainy Christmas. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm, I'm dreaming of a wet Christmas. But I'm not going to talk about that until we get closer to the weekend. Okay, don't put yourself out on a limb. No way. Necessarily. <laughs> See you, Hillary. Okay. Okay. Coming up in sports, exams are over in Charlottesville, but the University of Virginia basketball team had to get right back to work tonight. Bruce will tell us how the Wahoos did, and you'll also have his Monday Night Plays of the Week. Sports is next. This is your moment to be beautiful. Fragrance from Estee Lauder. Now at these legged stores. I got these for you. They're beautiful. Open them. Just look at the colors, the ribbon. They're electric. Oh, yeah, I stopped by the entertainers. So go ahead and open them, dear. Oh. Make Christmas exciting by dressing up your gifts with boxes, bags, and gift wrap from the entertainers. They're gorgeous. Please, open them. Show someone special you care with gift wrapping from the entertainers. Maybe they'll even open them. The entertainers, Collie Avenue in Kent, Hilltop East, Fairfield Shopping Center, and Lomans Plaza. No matter what anyone tells you, the Wall Street Journal cannot make you a success overnight. Which is why we suggest a 13-week subscription. Call 800-228-1200 for this great journal subscription offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-228-1200 now for the Wall Street Journal. It used to be cool, but now they say it will kill you. I couldn't do this without healthy lungs. <gasps> there was a time when celebrities would help sell cigarettes. But now some of them are doing their best to help smokers kick the habit. On the next entertainment tonight, see how some stars could be putting their career on the line by taking on the powerful tobacco industry. A thousand people a day die from it, no matter what the tobacco company says. The tobacco war is on, and the inside stories on the next entertainment tonight. Tuesday at 7, only on TV10. So what's this I hear? A disadvantage of being a basketball player. Everyone else gets a break and they don't? It's Christmas vacation. The basketball players are in the empty dorms, poor oh guys. Boy. A lot of fans, though, come to the game. <laughs> the ones that live in Charlottesville after taking nine days off for exams. The Virginia basketball team continued its pre-ACC warm-up, beating Jacksonville tonight 86-81. There were five Virginia players in double figures, led by senior Richard Morgan, who had 18. The Who's 
are 6-1. and one. All seven games have been at home. They play at home Wednesday against Cal Irvine, then take another week off before opening against Seton Hall December 28th in the first round of the Sugar Bowl Classic in New Orleans. Not so bad. They get to go to New Orleans. The NFL season has barely ended for non-playoff teams, but some are already pointing towards 1989. The San Diego Chargers today fired head coach Al Saunders. Uh, he had been in San Diego two and a half years. The Chargers head job is now open. Uh, let's do some hockey tonight. What do you say? Up in the garden, the New York Rangers beat the Washington Capitals 3-1. to one. We're going to pick it up third period. Rangers in white. It's tied at one. Rangers get a break. Brian Mullen goes to John Ogrotnik. Ogrotnik would then feed to a wide open Kelly Kissio on the right side. Kissio would beat Clint Malarchuk to the glove sign and New York had a 2-1 to one advantage. But later, with the Rangers still leading by the score of 2-1, to one, Capitals goalie Clint Malarchuk comes out to clear the puck. But in the meantime, New York's Tony Grodnio uh, gets by Malarchuk. He would put it in and score uh, into the open net. The Rangers go on to beat the Capitals by a score of 3-1. to one. Meanwhile, Buffalo in white and Edmonton skated to a five-ball tie. Second period, the Edmonton Oilers trail 3-2. to two. This is Mark Messier dropping it off for Craig McTavish. The wrist shot scores. The game is tied at 3-all. Then in the third period, the Oilers, uh, Jimmy Carson scores on the wrist shot. Uh, the Oilers and Sabres skate to a five-all tie. On the scoreboard, again, the Rangers uh, with the win. And then, of course, uh, the 5-5 tie. Montreal beat Hartford, and it was Toronto over St. Louis tonight. It is Monday night, uh, so we reach into our TV10 uh, sports tape to find the wackiest, the zaniest, the plays of the week. And you know it's playoff time in Chicago because it's time to bring out the winter football apparel, <laughs> even for Jim McMahon there, who didn't start tonight. Don't cry, Jimmy. And look on the sidelines. It's Mr. Bill, the sportscaster. I'll run him over. A juggle of the week. Vikings in white against the Packers. Wade Wilson to Darren Nelson. He juggles it right into the hands of Mark Lee. Happy birthday, Mark. Uh, one of the only bright spots of the year for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, the catch of the week, Houston Oilers in blue. Warren Moon, number one, looking for Haywood Jeffries. And watch the great concentration by Haywood Jeffries. Haywood up in the air. The ball is off his shoulder pads. He comes down with it, beating uh, Daryl Smith. That's the catch of the week. The hit of the week, Raiders in white. Tim Brown, the Notre Dame Heisman Trophy winner, as he catches the ball. Watch right there. Boom! Loses the football, ruled incomplete, separated from the ball by Derek Burrows. I'll tell you what, that Buffalo uh, defense playing very tough football. Steve Largent's revenge of the week set up here against the Broncos. Now, earlier this season, Largent was illegally hit by Denver's Mike Harden, who here uh, knocks, uh, catches an interception. He had knocked out a couple of Largent's teeth. Well, this is the revenge motive right there. Largent just nails Harden. Oh. Says, I remember 12 weeks ago, buddy. Kind of poetic justice, huh? Largent says, remember when you hit me? Hayden says, doesn't hurt a bit. Uh, <laughs> this is the second best catch of the week. Jim Everett of the LA Rams. Everett uh, will take the snap, comes out of the pocket, Rolls right, getting good protection. Uh, he throws, and watch this catch by uh, Pete Holahan. Oh, Great man. catch, a one-handed haul-in uh, for Pete Holahan. How do you stay uh, warm at the game? Okay, <laughs> but, but remember the uh, other half. That gets cold, too. <laughs> uh, leg takedown of the week. Is this legal or is this illegal? Huh? The Steelers, Ron Woodson. you got to watch the kicker, uh, Ralphie Mulshako. Is it a takedown? Uh, Mo gets a little left leg out there. Whoops, right there. A little oh, leg whip oh, action. Oh, oh. Uh, let's move to basketball. Oh. Buzzer shot of the week. Milwaukee Bucks in white. Three seconds left against the Lakers. Milwaukee trails by one. They go to Jay Humphreys with the shot at the buzzer. The Milwaukee Bucks over the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, Goff, putt of the week. Uh, Mike uh, Holbert on 18. He needs this to force an overtime in the tournament he's playing. Uh, uh, and it goes up the hill into the hole. Perfect roll. Is Mike excited? You bet, buddy. And, of course, Terry Zahn was at the game in the med. Oh, what dear. a Christmassy Terry. way to end the plays of the week. See how I caught my cold. That's right. Yeah. Uh, in baseball, the agent for Tim Lardner says the Minnesota Twins catcher has accepted a two-year contract offer in the Mets of uh, signed reliever Terry Leach. The former Tide will be paid $310,000 next season. And finally, bad news for the Oklahoma football team. No bowl games after the next two seasons and no live TV appearances next year. Uh, the Big 8 school is also on three-year probation, all handed down by the NCAA, uh, mostly because of uh, um, recruiting violations. Ooh, they're getting tough. Yeah, you got to wear a shirt when you're out there at the yes, game. I should know better by now. I, I appear every week, and you think I <laughs> know better by now. Thanks, Bruce. We'll see you later. Coming up, a whole lot of Christmas cards and a whole lot of money. We'll tell you about it after this. Of the USS Bainbridge, wishing my family and friends 
a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and see you on the pier. I'm up every morning at 3.30 so that when you get up, you'll have the up-to-date weather with news. 6.30, Monday through Friday, here on TV 10. You're the one they depend on to see it through. In this world, it all counts and it counts on you. Show that world some style. They call them crotch rockets. Cycles so powerful, insurance companies won't cover them. Bikers claim it's a conspiracy. But are these machines just too dangerous? Maybe we should pay college athletes. It might end the scandals and help the players. The scholarship check doesn't really go as far as you would like it to go. But would it ruin college sports? Plus, Faye Dunaway tells us about her burning secret on the next USA Today. Tuesday at 7.30, only on Wavy TV 10. If you've never bought a car before, if you're 18 or older with a driver's license, if you have no credit but at least six months on the job, then your credit is good at Bryant Yugo, and no one has to sign with you. This first-time buyer's plan is good on all 1988 Yugos, financing through Yugo Credit Corporation. And there's more, as long as they last, up to $750 cash back. No money down, and you need no credit if you're a first-time buyer. Four-year, 40,000-mile warranty on all 1988 Yugos. Carefree, cost-free coverage at its best from Bryant Yugo. Finally tonight, in keeping with the Christmas spirit, the children at M.D. Anderson Hospital in Houston sold nearly three million Christmas cards last year. What's even more special, they designed the cards, too. Sylvia Perez has the story. Three days out of the week, the kids at M.D. Anderson Hospital take a break for art. It was out of these classes that 15 years ago, the M.D. Anderson Christmas card project was born. A volunteer saw the artwork one child did and decided it would be a beautiful Christmas card. Now, 15 years later, it's a tradition. The cards with a special inscription inside are sold all over the United States, and other hospitals are trying to imitate this program. Every year, at least 10 cards are selected from the work these children create year-round. But it's the actual story behind each drawing that makes you realize just how special this project really is. Noelle Foreman knows she's the art teacher. Most of the cards have taken a period of time from several days to several weeks, sometimes even months. That's because many of the children who take part are very sick. Of the 12 cards chosen this year, three of the children who made them have died. Children like Les, the boy who drew this winning card. He, he was very ill, but he he stayed with it. They just, it becomes so much a part of their life and their whole being. That the project provides them with some happiness during a very difficult time. For the others who don't make it, the card is a lasting memory that will never die. Each one of these children that participates in the project is so special. Their life, think of their life, even if it was a short one, that each one was special. And Sylvia Perez for NBC News. And that's our report for now. Join Art Franklin and me tomorrow at 6 as we continue our look at Christmas in the Mad. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Glasses in about an hour? I thought, sure, as long as the lenses are simple. But I've got a tricky prescription. So I tried lens grafters. Lens Crafters crafts your quality glasses in about an hour by putting the whole lab right in the store so you can see better and work better in about an hour. Made me a pair of top quality no-line bifocals. And they did it in 51 minutes. No kidding. Lens Crafters, custom crafted eyeglasses in about an hour in Greenbrier Mall and Coliseum Mall. Open evenings and Sundays.